What is the secret to getting the perfect custom home design? Hey everyone, I'm Kathy Ewan, custom home designer and founder of Phase One Design. After designing over 500 homes in the last 12 years, my team and I know the exact formula for getting the perfect custom home design. We've narrowed it down to three incredibly simple things, and in this video, I am going to share these three things with you. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how to get the perfect home design suited for you. This YouTube channel is dedicated to sharing my custom home knowledge with you. If you're new to this channel, it would mean so much to me if you could just click the subscribe button. I will be uploading more videos like this on a weekly basis. Let's dive in. First, I'm going to emphasize that in order for this formula to work, it is absolutely critical to make sure that your home design has all three of these elements. Not one, not two, you need all three of these elements working together. Got it? Okay, great. So, as you're going through the design process with your custom home designer, Make sure that all three of these elements are captured for a perfect custom home design. So here are the three elements. Number one, function. So what is function? I always like to say, no matter how beautiful your home is, it is going to drive you crazy if it doesn't function for you. The function of the house is, well, is your house functional? So for example, when you walk into your home from outside every day, is there enough room to drop down all those bags that you're carrying and all your stuff? Is there enough room to take off your shoes, hang your jacket, maybe there's a little bench to sit down, and then where do your shoes and jackets go? Hopefully not on the floor. Uh, if you have kids or you know on a chair somewhere, hopefully there is adequate storage and closet space to put everything away and just make them disappear. Maybe you love entertaining and it's important to have an open concept area where you can host large groups of people. Maybe you love the idea of having the inside space flow into the outside space so you can host summer barbecues. Or maybe it's as simple as you love going to Costco and buying a lifetime supply of whatever it is you bought from Costco. Where does that go in your home? Do you have enough storage for all of that? So you get the idea. So now that you know that function is important, how do you get it? First, do your homework. Start making a wish list of how you want the house to work for you. What's important to you? So for example, think about the function of the home that you're currently living in or houses that you've lived in in the past. It's a good way to do it because you're familiar with that space. List out the things that work really well for you and then list the things that also drive you entirely crazy. So for example, maybe currently your kitchen island is perfectly situated so you have a great sight line for entertaining and a great view to your dining area and your main family living area where all your guests are. But maybe it drives you crazy that that island can only seat four people. Maybe you want to seat six people. If that's a thing for you, write it down. I always love recommending having the list on your phone or somewhere digital. And then that way you can always have access to it, access to it, and then you can add to it. You never know when a random thought is just going to pop into your head and related to your wish list. If you have it on your phone, your phone is always with you, and then you can just quickly add it in. So now, once you start working with a designer, another way to make sure you get the function for your home is to make sure that your designer has a process for digging really deep and finding out more about what you need your house to function like. An experienced designer should be discovering things about you that you didn't even know about you, if that makes sense. Number two, form. So what exactly is form? Well, form is the aesthetics of the house. So what does it actually look like? So for the exterior, what architectural style is it? What do the roof lines look like? What are the colors? So how do you know that your house has great form? Let's start with the exterior. Does the exterior make you smile every time you see it? Does it get you excited? When you're working with your designer, you know you have this right for your house. When your designer presents it to you, it should literally make you wanna say, wow, even if it's only with your inside voice. Your face should literally light up 
And by the way, as a designer, it is the coolest feeling I can't even describe when you present a design to a client and this actually happens in real life. Also, you should want to proudly circulate your design to all your friends and family. That's when you know you have nailed it. Now the interior finishing comes a little bit later on in the process as you start working with your interior designer, but it should also have that exact same effect too. Now keep in mind, the aesthetics of a house is going to mean something totally different to different people. Your, your idea of a beautiful house is going to mean something totally different than what it means to, let's say, even your best friend. So there's literally nothing right or wrong when it comes to form. It's just you need to get excited about it and it needs to pull that emotional reaction that I just described. So how do you make sure that you get great form? Let me share a few tips with you. First and foremost, just go out there and start gathering photos. Tons and tons and tons of photos of houses that you love. Start early. Even if you're in the really early stages of the process, just start gathering this collection of photos. What you're looking for is mostly pictures of homes that you love, both inside and outside. But sometimes it also helps to pull things of things that you don't like. Those two elements together are going to produce the best results in the end. Another tip, don't overthink it. Lots of people, when they go through this exercise, they limit their right creative side of their brain a little bit just by looking for photos that, of homes that will actually fit on their particular lot or fit their particular budget. Now, don't get me wrong. These things are really, really, really important. But for this exercise, this is the only time in the process where I will say, don't worry about your budget. And with regards to whether or not it will fit on your lot, that's something your designer will worry about for you later. The purpose of this exercise is to get stylistic inspiration. So usually the best way to do this is your first instinct is the best. So if you see a photo, either you love it or you don't. If you love it, put it in your collection. If you don't love it, move on. Another tip, work with a designer who understands how to ask questions and make you discover things about yourself and your aesthetic that you didn't even know that you wanted to have. An experienced designer should ask you a lot of questions about the aesthetics of your home, just to make sure that it's yours in the end. Even if your pictures look really random to you, an experienced designer will be able to ask you a lot of very pointed questions and pinpoint your style very quickly. So one last thing I wanna point out and differentiate. The custom home designer is actually more concerned about the exterior of the home and the floor plan design and will be working with you on the front end of the process. Whereas on the flip side, the interior designer is more concerned about the interior finishings and everything um, that comes a little bit later on in the process. Now that being said, both parties need to work together and everything needs to flow. All this homework that you're doing at this point in this process is going to matter for both parties. But I just want to make that very clear differentiation. Number three, budget. So please remember this. No matter how great your design is, I always say it is a completely failed design if it is outside of your budget and you never end up building it. Unfortunately, this is one of the most commonly missed elements out there. I think that we can all agree that once you're done the design process, you want to make sure that your design is on budget. Yeah, of course. So how do you make sure you're on budget? I'm going to share a few tips with you. Get a budget range before you start design and make sure it's realistic. Now as part, I've actually written a totally separate guide here on the planning process. I do totally deep dive into this topic of how to establish a realistic budget range. I provided a link below so you can go grab it there. Another tip, work with an experienced custom home designer that understands how to work with budgets. Have budget conversations throughout the entire design process. Budget conversations should literally parallel the design conversations as you go through design. Now, when the design process is fully complete, what will happen is a detailed set of drawings will be produced by your designer and now those drawings can then be issued to the builder. The builder will then be able to put together a detailed budget for you 
in collaboration with his trades and suppliers. Once that detailed pricing from the builder comes back, expect some level of design revisions. Even if you discuss budgets throughout the entire design, it is absolutely impossible to know the exact budget number until detailed drawings are produced and issued out to the trades. Now, that being said, if all of these previous steps were followed correctly, the design revisions that you're doing at this point should be all be very minor and of course without losing the integrity of the design. You should still be looking at your design and think, wow, I love this design and the small tweaks would be things that you probably wouldn't even notice that much in the first place. If you're working with an experienced designer and builder, there's actually surprisingly a lot of different ways that you can tweak the design at this point in the game to make sure that it's perfectly on budget. But again, this is assuming that the budget was realistic to begin with and that all these steps before were followed. So here's just an example of some of the revisions that you might normally see. So there's two, deleting options that you already knew might need to be modified. So for example, if you were contemplating whether or not to put a swimming pool in your backyard, but just wanted to have a price for it before making your final decision, Maybe the pricing comes back and you decide, yes, that's in my budget, then I guess you're getting a swimming pool, or you can decide to cut it out. The other type of revision that could happen is what we call minor revisions. So what that means is maybe you squeeze out a tiny bit of square footage here and there, or you reduce or modify window sizes, and the list goes on. Again, with an experienced team, your designer and builder are going to be able to help you go through this process in a way where at the end, you have a house that you love and a house that is on budget. So now you know the three elements of a perfect custom home design that you can use as a guide for your project. My contact information is below if you wanna reach out, if you have any questions, or just to say hello. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate it so much if you could hit the like button below and also subscribe. I upload a new video every single week on very similar topics. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.